Uh, this is part two of a demonstration about a use case for free plane mind mapping program about using mind maps for recipes. Last time we covered the basic steps and got to here. The main point is that in most recipes you have two separate lists. They're in different parts of the recipe and your eyes have to travel back and forth between the instructions and the ingredients. But here you have the instructions and the ingredients side by side so that when the recipe calls for the ingredients they're right there for you. And for many people this might be all they need. But I've got some ideas about formatting, making this better to find things and use. Some ideas about filtering so that in a big map, I mean this is only one recipe, but in a big map of hundreds of recipes, it'd be nice if you could find a recipe that uh, called for jello. You might have several in a map of a hundred recipes. And I'm going to cover some points about printing a recipe. The first item covers or concerns node width. Here you can see two nodes in the instructions that are not quite the same width. That means that when you're traveling down through the ingredients, you kind of have to take a little detour here. That's bad for my tired old eyes. So we're going to select all of the uh, nodes in this instruction column. And as I pointed out last time, if you hold the Alt key while pressing or while using the mouse wheel and moving it away from you, you make the nodes wider. Moving them towards you makes them narrower. But where they're all selected, it makes them a uniform size. So now when you're traveling down the in ingredients, they're all at the same position. The next thing I do is where there's uh, an instruction node that has ingredients as children. I like to kind of emphasize that a little bit. So I've highlighted all of those nodes and I'm going to invoke command search control F1. I've typed in shape and that gives us some node shapes that we can choose. I like bubble for something like this so I'm going to double click. So now those nodes have a uh, bubble shape around them. It's basically just a rectangle with rounded corners. And if that's too subtle, you could change the background color or whatever you wanted to do. The next thing I like to do is cut out words when I can. And since this says, is basically duplicating uh, what we have here, that is clutter to me. So. I would typically come here and just uh, get rid of that and maybe just put a comma instead of there of the and. And the same thing here. Uh, we've already got those ingredients out to the side, so I would just put combine and medium bowl. And it tells you right here what to combine. The next thing is to separate ingredient elements. And this is something I used to do because it's easier on my eyes. But it does take a, a little bit of time, and I found that when it comes time to print, it might be a problem. So I filtered in on this. I made a copy of, of this and turned it into this, where the ingredient is right next to the, to the node next to it. And then the uh, quantity and the documentation is off to the side. And if you have all of your ingredients like this, they all line up. And that makes it easy to, to find the ingredients. But it does take some work to reformat that. And as I say, it, when it comes time to printing, this actually winds up taking, can take up some extra space that kind of throws the printing off. So I decided it's not really worth the effort. But you, you might want to try it. The next thing is to apply a style to all the ingredients. 
a style can ha help change the look like you could have a, a light yellow background for each one of these if you wanted but it also helps in filtering and filtering helps in finding things makes it a lot easier to go through a big map again this is only one recipe in this map but your recipe your uh, mind map might have hundreds or more recipes and if you wanted to find all of them that had eggs as an ingredient or jello or whatever ingredient you're looking for it's a lot quicker if you have a style to help filter so I've got all my ingredients selected and I've opened up command search which is control F1 and typed in the word recipe and I found a couple of styles that I have created one is for the direction and one for ingredient and in this case I'm going to just double click on this and it will change or it'll apply that style to all of these that are selected so double click and it doesn't look like it changed anything but that's because my style is very simple it's basically the default style for the mind map you might do the same thing for the instructions if you thought there was an instruction somewhere in your map where it said dump salt now or something like that you could find all the recipes that said dump salt but I find it's much more useful to use the ingredients I won't go in depth here but just to give you an idea I've gone out of full screen mode and this is the filter menu that's that's shown here and I can go over here drop that down and type S that takes me to style I can come over here and type in R and that takes me to recipe ingredient and then I can turn on a filter and when I do that it'll hide these that don't have recipes attached to them and and these are labeled with again that style so I'm gonna click on this button now when you filter on anything it reduces the number of items that find can see so if we did a search now it would only search in things that are filtered with the recipe ingredient style so for example if I press shift control F as in find and then and then type uh, jello it'll find two places one is because it's in the uh, description or the directions here the other because it's in the ingredients and as I mentioned before I like to kind of clean the, these up anyway so I would normally have uh, gotten rid of jello and hot water just combine in medium bowl jello and hot water now if I run that filter again or the find it's only going to come up with that one in the ingredients and again that's no big deal in a map that's only got one recipe but a map that has hundreds of recipes let's say you had a hundred recipes and ten of them have jello when you run your find instead of just having one line you'd have ten lines and then you could find everything in your map that had jello as an ingredient and from there you could filter on those and look for some other recipe or some other ingredient like maybe cream then you'd find everything that had jello and cream so I've got a few tips on how to use this in everyday life one is to focus on the current step and one thing we've already done is to increase the gap between major sections so that because there's a bigger gap here there's more of a chance you're or less of a chance you're going to get lost while reading this and just kind of your eyes travel down here but probably something that's more dependable is filtering and jumping in 
So if I'm working on this step number one, I can filter it. And I've got a video on both uh, jump in and filter. So I won't go into the details here. I'll just kind of improve the flow by just doing it. But I'm going to invoke a filter here on, num on this one. And that automatically hides steps two, two and three. So this is all you see if you're working with a computer when you're cooking. I'm going to remove that filter. The other is jump in, which is similar, but you lose a little bit of context. I mean, if you know what recipe you're working on, then this is fine. If you don't, then it's probably better to filter because then you can see the recipe. You, you can get around that if you first filter on this and then jump in here. Sorry, I got that backwards. You'd want to jump in here and then filter here. And that gives you, and this is handy when you print too because you don't want to have the uh, root node and everything in the print because it takes up space on your paper. The other way to focus in is by using clouds. So I'm here and invoke the command search, control F1, type in cloud, and then this is what I usually use is just rec rectangle or a round rectangle. If I double click this, it uh, that's what a cloud looks like with a rectangle around it. And if I double click on remove cloud, it just takes it away. So with a cloud on, it's not very likely you're going to your eyes going to drift to another section of the recipe. Again, I've opened command search control F1 and typed in print. And let's see what this would look like if print preview. So double click. I uh, will take that out a little further. This is telling us that it's not fitting on the page. So there's a couple things we could do about that. We could change the orientation of the page and see if that works. Let's go to print setup. Uh, let's see. Let's, let's fit the width and OK and make sure we're in landscape. OK. Now let's preview again. This time it's showing that you that it is going to fit. Now something else when we were in print setup and we could change margins. I've, I've already changed these so they uh, are give you more room to put your, the map. Would rather print portrait instead of landscape. We could try changing this from map view to outline view. So in the command search I've typed in outline and we'll double click this. This kind of takes it from being most maps tend to, to grow horizontally this is more like a just a outline you do on a piece of paper which is more vertical so back in command search with print let's go preview this well let's go to setup first and fit height to page and go to portrait okay and then preview So this fits better preview. It doesn't look like a map anymore, but if that doesn't bother you, uh, this might be just what you need. And sometimes on the preview, it makes it look, these are those nodes that we put a, uh, a border around, but it's, it's kind of looking like they're not there, but I've, I've printed this out and it, it prints fine. So that's all for part two. If you, Again, uh, the first video covers the basic steps, and it might be just all you need. Um, anyway, I hope you found this useful, and thanks for watching.